Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscarini, a four-hour unit on forces and motion. Today's lesson will be about speed time graphs. In our previous lesson, we investigated distance time graphs, which is a way of representing the motion of an object. Today we're going to see speed time graphs, but we'll see very many similarities. First of all, in a speed time graph, time will always be placed on the horizontal or x-axis and speed on the vertical or y-axis. And if you remember, when we investigated distance time graph, we started with the simplest kind of motion, an object which is not moving. In a distance time graph, that was represented by a flat line. Where that flat line was depended on the distance that object was. In a speed time graph, on the other hand, uh, we're representing a motion that has a constant speed of zero. And that means that an object which is not moving has a speed time graph given by a flat line along the x-axis. So this is an object which is not moving, or as we say, has a speed of zero. In general, a flat line in a speed time graph represents an object that has a constant speed. Because, and since this is a speed, this represents a speed that doesn't change as time passes. And what is the difference between these two lines? The blue line has a bigger value of speed. So this represents a speed which is greater than this one. So how about a line with a slope? It is not speed, it is not distance. What does it mean? A slope in a speed time graph means that the speed is changing. Let's see the red line for instance. We start at rest, no speed, at time equals zero. After one unit of time, the speed has increased by one unit of speed. After two units of time, it has increased of two units of speed, and so on. So first of all, since we have a change of speed, it's obviously we're talking about an acceleration. But more than that, we have an acceleration at a constant rate. So the speed is always changing by the same amount. So this is no simple acceleration, this is a constant acceleration. So straight line, in a distance time graph, it was a constant speed. In a speed time graph, a straight line is a constant acceleration. And in a similar way in which we saw this in, for distance time graphs, it's easy to understand that a line that has a bigger slope again represents a constant acceleration but a greater acceleration than this one. Why this? Because in the same amount of time, the red line has increased of this amount of speed, while this one has increased of a bigger amount of speed. So this is accelerating more than this one. If you remember, in a distance time graph, we found out that the slope of a line was actually giving us the value of a speed. Now, we already have the speed in a speed time graph. So, does the slope have a specific meaning? The answer is yes, and we can see it from here. Again, we know the slope is given by the ratio between rise and run. The run, as in a distance time graph, is again the time, but now the rise is the speed, speed over time, or we can say change of speed over time, and we know what that is, that is acceleration. So in a similar fashion as we did for distance time graph, we can say that the slope of a line in a speed time graph is equal to the acceleration. 
So let's put all this information together and let's investigate a complex motion. This is a speed time graph. And as you can see, I've break up, broken up this motion in three parts. Parts A, B and C. And we shall see them together. In part A, the object started from zero speed, increased the speed over this amount of time to reach a maximum amount of speed. So in part A, the object is accelerating. In part B, we have a flat line. A flat line represents a constant speed. So we have an object that accelerates, reaches a top speed, keeps this top speed until here, and then what happens? The speed goes down. Again, goes down at a constant rate. So this is a constant deceleration or retardation until zero speed, until it reaches a halt over this amount of time. So what were the learning goals of this lesson? By the end of this lesson you should be able to represent the motion of an object using a speed time graph. On the other hand you should also be able to recognize the kind of motion represented in a speed time graph. So as we did for distance time graphs you should be able to write, draw actually and read speed time graphs. Next lesson will deal with how we can record the motion of an object and our last um, lesson for this unit on forces and motion will be about free fall.